Well, in my opinion, Sri Lanka is in debt, declared bankrupt and in default. The scenario has enabled and facilitated the rollout of many agendas simultaneously. Now, when a country is weak and vulnerable, all the vultures come out. Despite that, it is also an excellent time to look at the situation head on, identify the issues and think of solutions. Can Sri Lanka do so? Can we think differently and get out of this crisis by ourselves? Once again, like week after week, I raise this, are we going to do more of the same? There are many solutions Sri Lanka can think of in order to get out of this crisis. But thanks to the uh, liberal think tanks who claim to be doctors, proctors and professors, uh, yet all of what they are is a bunch of jokers, thanks to them, day in and day out, we are chanting the IMF Gathava. The IMF Deyo is holding carrots in exchange for cutting the service sector and increasing taxes. But has the IMF placed a condition like demanding that politicians cut their perks and privileges or recover unpaid taxes from the top corporates? Why do they always insist on cutting the health benefits of the poor, education for the impoverished, and other social welfare measures for low-income families? Now, as of today, people's salaries are trimmed by taxes, making them look or for alternative options, resulting in leaving jobs, flying overseas, selling their property, and taking their money out of this country. This will undoubtedly lead to the collapse of the public and private sectors. How many of us have honestly thought about the outcome of such a scenario? What will happen to the banks, the small and medium enterprises, enterprise sector, and other local industries in this country? Which, in my opinion, is the backbone of our nation. Now, people are selling their land, property, and leaving the country. Who is buying these lands? Foreigners or lo locals as fronts for foreigners? Where will this end up for a sovereign state? With regard to the credit lines, as of now, we see a lot of investment by India in the country and many key businesses being pawned off to our Navy in the north. This will give India the upper hand to dictate how Sri Lanka is governed. Where will this lead to? Do we elect politicians to parliament and watch them live a life of luxury, yet meekly consent to do all that foreign nations demand of them to do? And of course, we have to talk about the US influence on our people and our sovereignty. We have seen the manner that the educated community in Sri Lanka were easily drawn to the streets while an educated society looked on. The violence instigated probably by people given drugs or alcohol, but cheered by the educated to commit the rampage they did. All hallmarks of Western funded regime change and protests. We've seen this similar pattern in Arab, in Egypt, in Venezuela, and parts of China recently. Yet despite all that, it was framed as the protest of the people, led by many who claimed to be intellectual. Why did those educated couldn't come up with alternative plans to solve the problem? Using organizations and political parties funded by external sources, they have penetrated into universities and have subtly brainwashed the youth of our country. They made, they made uh, being patriotic sound to be something so old and demeaning and not of the modern world. That narrative is very important to, up, to be upheld by these puppet masters. Because just imagine if all Sri Lankans do truly love their country, can the puppet masters do what they want to do here? Entry of drugs into the school systems is also not being addressed properly. And the police are being humiliated and demoralized alongside the military. Areas where the foundation of law and order is now targeted. The manner that the police and armed forces are being attacked using uh, hired media personnel and NGOs as well showcases where the ultimate goal is. Corrupting society is being rolled out by attempting to bring in ideology where they try to create a society who do not value traditional and culture. 
and dawn to embrace cult fantasies that lead them to eventually become depressed, psychologically weak, and physically abused. And if you think about it, they are all ingredients for the pharmaceutical industry to create customers for life. With Sri Lanka in a weak and vulnerable state, the crusaders of dividing Sri Lanka have come out again to seek separation via renewed slogans that have the nod of approval of their sponsors, for it enables them to advance their agenda, piggybacking on the local demands. It is a pity that the mainstream media is playing the fiddle to the primarily because they are part of that most significant agenda. Today, only a handful are able to see the larger picture at play, having watched how other nations have fallen and the cut and paste similarities taking place in Sri Lanka. This is why some educated seem not to understand the importance of history, as those who forget or ignore history are bound to repeat it, or in Sri Lanka's game, case, become victims of it. The bottom line is that this is our nation. Everyone should feel that it is our nation and wish to protect and preserve it. We are too small of a nation to have been prostituted and used as a battering ram as it has happened since 1505. The problems we are in right now does not need solutions from beyond our shores. We already know what needs to be done. The only problem is that we, as people of this country, are divided. Until we understand that this Sri Lanka is yours and mine. This Sri Lanka is a land that you and I need to fight for. This Sri Lanka is a land that will bring out the best of each and every citizen. And that we can make this the greatest country in the world. But until that time, all what we have is an opportunity at hand. If neglected, that will be soon be lost. We'll be right back.